Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the uh, first release stream of Copado CRT for the year 2022. The holiday season is over, and we are back to work with all of the nice stuff and testing that we're going to do. And we already have some nice new features for you guys to check out and some nice content. We sent you a, a list of uh, some of the topics that we're going to discuss today. There's going to be a couple of quite exciting new features that we have in here. I'm not going to be alone in, in showing all of this. And it's really nice to have such a good crowd on the first week as well after the holidays and uh, getting back into the stream. Today with me on the stream, we also have Yona, who's one of our product specialists. Let's uh, get Yona up. Hello, Yona. How are you doing? Uh, hello. I'm good, thanks. Uh, so I'm Yona Sinsalo, a product specialist from, from our customer engineering team. Thank you, Jona, and, and we're going to hear from Jona in, in a short while a little bit more. Uh, and Jona is going to show you some of the features that we've developed in the last month, and it's going to be on the new release that you can also use immediately on your all of your development that you're doing with CRT and all of that. And just a quick recap on why we are even doing what we're doing, talking a little bit about why Copilot robotic testing exists. This is something that I want to reiterate that it's not just about software or the nicest hacks or the best coding script. What we actually want to achieve with this tool is actually helping out organizations and helping out them out with problems that they actually care about. We want to help you guys with speed. If you only can roll out new features slowly, it really chokes out your competitive advantage. It doesn't matter if you have the best features that there are. If you're rolling them out slower than your competitors, it's not going to last that long. And we want to help you with that. Another thing is we want to ensure quality. If your business is running on broken software, then it really hurts your customers and your business in running in this mode. And we really want to help you achieve that quality with all of the help that we can give you guys. And third, of course, the magic triangle of all of these is cost. We want to help you keep in budget and avoid service interruptions. So you can actually have all three sides of the triangle, even though typically you'd only have two. And what have we done this month or well, last year on December to actually achieve these goals? Some of the new features that we are now have for you today and what are going to be our topics for today. Firstly, we are going to have data-driven testing. This is something that we've had a lot of requests about. We've talked with a lot of people and they want to, hey, can we somehow import a lot of data that we have in an Excel sheet or in some other format or JSON format in our systems that we would like to use for testing? We've done something for you and uh, integrated it into the main UI. And we'd really like your feedback on this and really let you guys try it out, tell us feedback, and, and tell us how it goes. Then second, we're going to have QConnect and QConnect Dev. This is when you want to do development locally. You have some application, SAP or something that's on site or on your machine, but you want to do development using visual code or other tools, but you still want to leverage the cloud to be able to run this test in there if you want to and connect to the cloud environment from your local machine. QConnect and QConnect Dev are there for you. Third, a little bit of a smaller thing, but the shows that we are still expanding all of our compet uh, of sorry about that, that's uh, rambling on a little bit. Expanding our amount of compatibility with different kind of DevOps platforms and all of that. We're now offering a, also a great integration with Azure DevOps repositories on JIT in there. And fourth topic today, we're going to have a little bit of a QA if you have any kind of technical questions or anything like that. Me and uh, Yona will be answering any of your technical questions and taking suggestions on what topics we'll be taking next. And yeah, uh, some really nice and interesting topics for today. And uh, let's get to it. Let's get to the actual features that we're going to have. We're going to have a first of our demo. First new feature is going to be the data driven testing. And to demo that out, we're going to have Yona come join us on the stream. Okay, yeah. thank you, Henry. I'm gonna move to the side and let you take the stage for this a while. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so about data-driven testing. So we've had the data-driven testing feature uh, already during during the end of last year, but now we have developed it, it further in, into a direction that has been requested a lot. So how you can uh, bring your data easily using using Excel or, or CSV files to your tests. So I will actually use my, uh, my personal uh, uh, free account 
So this is something that you can all also do to yourselves. Um, <clears throat> I will go to my project and I have a test data example test suite. And now you can see that there is this new UI element test data here available. And uh, you can upload, upload your Excel sheets uh, through this uh, UI element to your test suites. And you can also see that this is a beta feature. So the first thing that uh, you need to do, unless you have done it already, is, is go to your profile and check that you have the beta features enabled. So this, is, this will now enable, <coughs> enable you to upload your own, own Excel to your test suites. So let's go back to the project. Um, we have also integrated the link to our help here. So if you have some questions, you can click this help link and it will open um, our documentation regarding our beta features. So that is the fastest way to get answers, uh, answers to your questions. Okay, how this thing works then? So <clears throat> basically the idea is that you can just uh, upload an Excel file and this is what I'm going to upload. So here is an example. Uh, just a moment, I'll be reconnecting. <clears throat> okay, so let's, let's go back to the suite. So I have an Excel file where I have uh, accounts for Salesforce. So I can just click the upload, uh, choose a file, and uh, I have an Excel file where I have uh, uh, variable names on rows. So for example, account name, phone, uh, website, etc and then the uh, variable values on, on rows and columns under, under those uh, variables. Uh, so you can have, have those values on rows or on columns, so whatever you prefer. Uh, then you just click Next. Uh, the system will show you preview of the data. So these are the variable names, like account name, phone number, and then the values that, that are read from, from the file. Uh, let's send the data to the API. And there are also examples that how you can use, use these variables in your uh, test suites. Now we can close, close the upload test data uh, UI and now the data is ready to be used. So <clears throat> One cool thing is that you can upload multiple Excel, Excel sheets here and you can choose what you want to use. So for example, here I have accounts and leads. So let's choose accounts and then I can choose the data that I want to use in my test runs. So for example, here uh, I had three rows in my Excel sheet having, having data so I can choose that what data row I want to use in my test run, and then click save, and then those variables will be available for my test run. So <clears throat> how, how this uh, differs from, from the previous version that we had is that these variables are also available in live testing. So when you upload your test data, you can open Q Editor. <clears throat> and open live testing. And here we can see that I'm using those variables from the Excel file in my script. And although it shows uh, that those are red, that those would not be available, but they actually are. So since they are imported from the Excel, so the system uh, doesn't recognize those immediately but let's try that they work actually. So I will execute my script step by step.
and creating a new account. <clears throat> and now let's see if the variables are available. Yes, so now the system is using that test data that I just imported from the, from the Excel and entering the data into new account from, from those variables. Okay, so, so the variables are available in live testing. You can use them there and of course they are variable or they are available in normal test runs. So whenever you uh, initiate a test run, uh, the selected data will be available uh, in, in your test runs. Okay, so this was shortly about how to, how to use the new, new test data feature and how to import variables from, from Excel files. Okay, thank you, Jonah. <clears throat> I, I'm really excited that this feature is set. One thing is that uh, we had something like this existing on the API level previously. Didn't you say it like that, that we had it, but it was a bit more difficult to use, right? Yeah, yeah. So, th so the yeah. previous version was was focused on data-driven testing. Yo. So you, you could have an, a template and you could uh, import data for the template, but the data wasn't available in live testing mode. So yeah. now it's made easier. So you can just import your Excel and use that data uh, immediately in live testing also. Yeah, and I think that's that's a really important point that, that we are not just uh, developing new features, but making previous features much more easier to use. As I, I think that's uh, one of the key points also in, in what we're doing is we want to make the system easy to understand and easy to use. So you actually use the features. It doesn't matter if it have the best features there is if they are really difficult to use or do you agree? Yeah, that's that's true. Okay, hey, uh, thank you, Jonah. Any any comments on there from from you to me? <laughs> yeah, uh, no comments. Thank you. Thank you, Jonah. Uh, let's go to the next feature that we have. Uh, here we go. Hoping the slides are visible. Yes, yes. So the next one that we're going to look into is actually something that we've also had a lot of discussions about uh, and something that's been been around for a while but hasn't been too easy to use is something we call QConnect and QConnect Dev. This is a feature where you can do development locally with your own editor, for example, or, or be support Visual, Visual Studio Code to do that editing and do the development. If you have something locally that you're running that I was talking about, we were talking about SAP and other kind of local software that you can also test out. So it doesn't have to be cloud software. Or then for example, you have a lot of different versions of browsers that you want to test on a certain display or something like that on your local device or your local setup. QConnect and QConnect Dev are the tools to enable you to do that. So you're not just citing the cloud, but you can also do local development. And to uh, show us that new feature, we are going to have Yore Dubramin come, come and present to us. But actually, uh, Yore is uh, still enjoying his holidays. He still has his hat on. So what we are actually then going to do is we're going to actually run a video that Yore recorded to us on how this feature actually works. And we can see the demo features on what's there, what's going on in there. Let me just put the video on that we have in here. Here we go. Hi, I'm a Pada robotic testing team. I'll show how to get started with the QConnect dev feature for on-premises development and debugging of test cases. To get started, you need the on-premises development add-on enabled for your Pada robotic testing user. Let's go to our profile page and scroll down to the add-on section to verify that the add-on is enabled. We're going to need the QConnect software, which acts as a local test executor. If you're going to do mobile test development, select the one with the Android support, otherwise the plain Windows installer is a smaller download. I have already downloaded and installed the QConnect software as seen on this Windows Apps and Features setting page. There's no need to run the software at this point, just to install it. Let's go to Visual Studio Code. 
here I have a local file open with some keyword test cases. We're going to need the two editor extension from the Visual Studio Code Marketplace. So let's search for that and install. The first installation may take a while due to the machine learning features being initialized. To con connect the Q Editor extension to Copado robotic testing, we're going to need to add a personal access key and enter it into the extension. Let's go back to the user profile page and under personal access keys, add a new key. Click to copy back in Visual Studio Code, set access key, control V to paste, enter. Let's also integrate our test scripts with a test suite in Kubernetes Robotic Testing. Let's configure integration. This file is generated automatically and it asks for the test suite URL. Let's go to the test suite and just copy control C the URL from the browser and paste in the configuration file. In the test script file, above each test case, there is a debug button. Now that everything is set up and I click debug, the Q editor extension will launch Q Connect on this laptop to execute the test case. In this case, the test case uses the Q web library to go to a web page in the Chrome browser and verify that some text is visible. To so actual debugging, we can add the debug keyword to one of the test cases, which needs the debug library from Robot Framework. Alternatively, we can use the debug on keyword from the Q web library. Let's debug the test case with the debug on keyword. The test steps up to the debug on keyword are executed and then the execution stops and the Visual Studio Code terminal will show an interactive debugger where we can explore by typing more keywords. Click text, check out and the keywords are executed on the fly. More conveniently, we can go to the test case in the editor, highlight a line there, and press Control Enter to copy the line to the debugger, and then press when Enter once more to execute the line. And we can add more keywords to the test case. and control enter and enter to execute them. In the debugger, we can type help to see which commands are available. And when done with it, exit to close the debugger session. This was an introduction to QConnect Dev. Thank you all for listening. Okay, thank you, Jori. Uh, some of the comments about that feature as well that we were discussing is also that one thing is that it just doesn't enable local development with uh, with the actual uh, web browsers and all of that. It also enables you to 
to develop with the uh, Android phones or anything that's connected to the local environment. And with QConnect Dev, what you can also do is you don't have to do the development locally. You can do development on, in the cloud and then through QConnect Dev, run it on your local device or anything that's actually connected to that QConnect installed Windows machine. That we, Yori was also speaking in the beginning about the fact that there are two versions, one with Windows support and one with Windows plus Android. That Windows plus Android enables you to do mobile testing as well through that. If you don't want to run those tests in the cloud using our partners that we also have who provide devices in the cloud. And uh, I think your video is very concise and it's going to be part of our documentation as well as, as I think it's a really good video on showcasing how you can actually use those features, how do you get it running. Uh, and uh, thank you Yori for that even, even though not being on here. I, I think it was a really good video. The third topic that we're going to have in here is Hi, this is Yori. It's not Yori again. We're going to have Azure Repos integration. Uh, this is something that's quite quick to show you guys. Something that's uh, also been requested is that when uh, I, I'm have, I have my own demo project here, which I, which I have, which has currently Selenium suit and a uh, new test suit. What I can also do is when I'm going to add a new suit in here, previously, we didn't have the Azure Repos button here. So now you can easily add in an Azure DevOps repository to your testing project with just the Git URL that you get from dev.azure.com and with their personal access token. So you don't need any password in that. It's, it's much more secure using the personal access token. And then actually now that we're here, I'm gonna answer a question that I got last time that we didn't have time to answer about the actual Selenium tests. I, I had a question about uh, the actual Selenium tests being run and do we get any logs from the Selenium suit that we have? We can actually get some logs on the actual test cases, but they're not as verbose as compared to the same tests being run on the actual robot framework based uh, uh, web, web libraries that we have, which then give you a lot more verbose data on your actual test runs in there. So that's something that is also also covered. So uh, I, there's a lot of different things that I, I think that you should switch from Selenium to Rubber Framework, but that's just one tip. But... And yeah, the third topic that we're going to have that we were discussing is uh, having, uh, I don't know why this isn't working as well as good, uh, is having a, a little bit of a QA with our testing experts. We've had some questions about uh, different ways of uh, uh, developing test records and developing other other stuff in actual CRT. So I'm going to welcome uh, Jona back back to the stage with me as well and uh, answer some of the questions that we've had about doing development in uh, in CRT and all of that. Uh, I think one one good question that came to my mind uh, that's also from the audience that we should start with is people were asking what's the difference when you're developing in the cloud and in, in the local environment? Why would you want to develop sometimes locally is a question that I have in, in the questions. What do you want to think? Um, I think there can be multiple reasons for that. So, for example, if, if you are uh, automating some application that is only running in your local environment, that's one. And then if you are used to using some uh, IDE to develop, uh, automation and you prefer to use that so that's that might be a reason that you want to want to develop locally yeah and i guess one one is also security if you have something running in, in your own server or in your own deployment environment that you want to keep secure and not yet released to the public web i guess that's also a good reason to run testing maybe not locally but maybe inside your local local network and uh, and also also said we can then run on your own machines uh, some of the Android tests and all of that in the local environments. Uh, then we have a second question. Uh, there's a question from the audience from uh, Joachim who's asking, is it possible to use more than one, re one data record in the test case? For example, all test data records in the CSV file. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so if, if I 
understood correctly, so using the whole whole file content for test case. Um, currently, how we do it is that we choose the data from from one line in in the Excel file. So the the whole whole data set is is not uh, used in in the test case. Uh, but that's that's interesting point and and uh, we will think that if there are some use cases for that. And of of course the data driven testing option is also uh, uh, in a way it, it runs through every line using a test template. So that is one way to go through the whole data from from this data file. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Uh, do you Jonas still have the documentation open? If you could, uh, I had the presentation here, but maybe if you could show the data. Uh, generation features or test generation features that we have from the documentation that could be good if we can get your screen shared as well so then we can easily show that it, it can be done with the test data features that we have <clears throat> okay <clears throat> yes yeah, so this is this is our do documentation about the about the test data API, and uh, uh, you can you can use a robot frameworks uh, data driver feature to uh, create this kind of uh, test template, uh, and then you provide provide the test data file as a parameter, and then the template goes through every uh, line in that in that data file. So that's the kind of the data driven uh, data driven approach. If if you want to use that, and here are here are the uh, instructions and examples how to actually use that. Yeah. Yeah, and also also even then you can use this together with our automated test design features that can then be used to create a lot of tests if you have for example a need to cover a lot of corner cases and you have a lot of variables that you have to test you can easily use if you can click on the automated test design parts and show show the kind of envice oh, okay or, or i can i can also show it on the documentation side of it is that you can combine combine it with the automated test generation that we have to provide you with that couple of different ways of actually generating a lot of test cases from the data that you have. And sharing my screen. So this is a little bit of an older feature that we have as well. Automated test design. This enables uh, test generation based on, based on patterns and you can generate a huge amount of tests in these. You can feed the data from your Excel into this test generation mode where you can actually for example here create combinations of tests where you pick either John and Jane and then Johnson and Jane and from here and generating a, an, an amount of tests based on this. Of course with the trivial example of two variables for first name and two variables for last name the amount isn't too much but let's say these are all the corner cases for credit card numbers these are all the corner cases for email and all of these kind of variables and you have a lot of these different variables that you want to test their interactions with on, on kind of like a little bit in a kind of like even exploratory fashion and trying to find out if we have any problems in some of the combinations that you might feed into it. You can use this to create a lot of a lot of test cases and here's the combinatorial testing case where you can put in a lot of these the system will generate to a combinatorial amount of these tests and help you out in really finding out these kind of issues as well and combine that with the Excel feature you're going to have a really easy time generating, if needed, thousands of tests in our system. Okay, let me just check out other questions do we have. Uh, we have one question, is, is, the, uh, is the Excel feature available in the free trial? Yes, it is available. Yes in the free trial one thing is it's, it is under the beta features flag so you have to go in to your to your actual uh, user profile and enable beta features so there's an option for you to enable all of these new features that are in there 
uh, that are still in kind of like beta testing but already live go enable that and then you will see those features in your actual pre-trial project uh, talking about the Q, if you don't see the queue connect and also uh, you can in your profile you have to activate the add-on for you or your administrator has to activate your rights to activate that add-on it might be that you don't have rights in the actual uh, crt project to enable that uh, connection for you it might be enabled for your organization but not for you contact your uh, administrator on helping you getting that running if that's something that you need in your test cases okay uh, looks like we don't have any other questions as, as of night right now. Do you have, Jona, any, any kind of topics that come into my, your mind that's been been asked a lot in uh, customer meetings or with customers that's something that could help a lot of people in here? Um, well, I think that this this uh, Excel file support has been one of the biggest biggest topics from our customers. So that has been ask, asked a lot. and. Now it's available and, and we hope that you guys try it out and then give us feedback that how to how to develop it further. Yeah, that's that's a really good point in it that, that these features are still under the beta beta flag because of the fact that we, we also want a lot of feedback on it. We have the Copado Success community, which you can then use. Uh, I'll put in a link to the link to it in the chat that you can go in and discuss with all, all, all of the other people using these features. And who are also developing these features and we really like a discussion going on around this so that we can also learn as much as we can about what you guys are actually wanting to use these features for so that you can get a lot more value out of it and we can improve continuously improve these features as well to the direction that helps you guys out for example now we had good good discussions about the how, how can we use the excel feature oh we have a question let me let me see uh, there's a question that how many characters in each cell in Excel file are accepted by CRT? That's uh, something that I guess we should be testing out. Yeah, that's something that we need to try. I already know that it doesn't accept a certain special characters, so uh, I think that will come in the next release. So. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm guessing it's probably limited by the variable type, but. Uh, Guessing it can be quite long. On uh, 255 or more is this another question that? Well, honestly, I, I'm not 100 sure how many characters it does, but I think it depends on on st st variable. I think it's it as a string, so I guess it can be even longer than 255 characters in a robot framework because robot framework uh, or, or the CRT is based on Python, and Python string variables can be long. So I don't think it's it's limited to 256 characters. It might even be that Excel is the first one to limit you and not not actually uh, CRT. Okay, I think we had a good questions about the Excel feature. We had a lot, lot, good discussion about that. Uh, seems like we don't have that many other questions coming in. Uh, what's going to happen next is uh, we again. Oh, we had one question still coming in, you know, in a hurry here, even though we're just starting in this. Uh, how many rows does it support? Again, I, I guess we, we'll have to break it. We'll have to generate a huge Excel and see when it breaks. Yeah, I guess it's more about also on how do you navigate it easily on the UI? As, as, as I think if you have thousands of uh, line items on your Excel, it's, it's not about if the system can handle it, but it's more about uh, if uh, if it's easy to use. If you have thousands of lines in there, it's, it's quite difficult to do it from the UI. You can, of course, do it from the API side, but that's a little bit more trickier to use. Uh, and the main goal of that feature is to make it easy to use, to easily switch around, for example, accounts, organizations, passwords and such in, in your test cases, uh, so that you can easily vary the test setup based on which configuration you are testing currently. Yeah, now I'm going to say we're going to, going to go to the end of the stream. We had a couple of new features. We hope that you guys test it out, uh, see see how they are, give us feedback, send me email. My email isn't actually here. I'm 
I'm quickly going to show, show it here. If you have any questions, you can always contact me or Jona through email and ask us any anything about about the stream, about these features, and we'll be glad to help you out and uh, get, get going on it. Go ahead. Uh, there's the free trial available for the CRT. If you haven't used it, you can always make a new CRT free trial account and use that as a playpen to test out all these new features if you don't want to test them out in your production or your own organization environment. Go ahead and use that and uh, play around with them and find out how they can help you. And from that, I'm going to go back to the thank you slide. And uh, from me, thank you uh, and have a nice start of the year. And uh, yeah, thank you, Jonah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And have a nice day.